My name is Jeff Adams with Washington Sea Grant and I want to welcome you to this video of the creatures of the shores of Puget Sound and we're producing this video as part of the Kitsap Beach Naturalist Program which is a collaboration between Washington Sea Grant and Washington State Extension Service in Kitsap County as well as several other partners. What you're going to see in this video is a variety of creatures and algae that live along the shorelines and information on uh, their life histories and how to identify them as well as the shorelines and why they're important to us and how to take care of them. A marvelous window opens for us during low tides. Good beach etiquette calls on us to respect all creatures that make up the rich diversity of intertidal life. When introducing people to the wonders of nature, we try to instill a sense of respect and stewardship toward all life. In order to have the least impact on your surroundings, you and those who join you on the beach should consider the following. Walk slowly to discover what you might otherwise miss. Step in bare spots when possible to limit injury to the shoreline creatures. Walk the edges and bare spots of eelgrass beds to protect this important habitat. Never overturn a rock larger than your head. Move rocks slowly and with care. Always return them gently to their original position to avoid crushing anything that lives beneath. Tide pools are special and fragile. Kneel quietly by tide pools and observe Take care not to walk in them. Always wet your fingers before feeling stars, clams, snails, and other fairly hard-bodied animals. Avoid prodding soft-bodied creatures. Anemones, for example, may squirt seawater if poked, but they need that water for survival until the tide returns. Unless you're harvesting shellfish, leave organisms where you find them. If you are harvesting or digging to explore, Refill your holes. Piles of sand left on the beach can smother other organisms. Leave creatures attached to rocks rather than removing them for study. Much can be learned about them by observing how and where they live. Be considerate of others' limitations and be kind when reminding people to tread lightly. Children get especially excited when discovering new creatures so be patient with toddlers or high-energy kids. And of course, be a good example yourself. Also, be a good steward and pick up garbage when you can. Here's some teaching tips. Point out the larger, obvious animals and plants, but stop to notice the small things too. This broadens people's perspective and redirects children's energy by focusing on the amazing minutia. Asking questions is a powerful teaching tool. How do sea stars eat? Why are seaweed and eelgrass important? What's living under your feet? What do anemones use their tentacles for? You can also answer a question with another question that spurs discovery and be receptive of the ideas others share with you. Every beach has its own things to teach us, depending on its makeup. Sand, mud, rocks, boulders, bedrock, pilings, bulkheads, and fallen trees. Though all these features may be found in the same place, 
Each beach tends to have a dominant habitat feature that indicates what lives there and the fascinating stories these residents have to tell us.